video provides some basic information on how to use the Fisher-Johns melting point apparatus. You can probably derive the greatest benefit from this video by first familiarising yourself with the basic concepts of melting point determination as they apply to preparative organic chemistry. And if you haven't already done so, you should read the related material in section 210 of your lab manual. Now, melting point is one of the main physical properties in preparative organic chemistry because the melting point of a compound can give us important qualitative information regarding the purity of a sample synthesized in the lab, and it can also help us in identifying a chemical compound. This is the Fisher-Johns melting point apparatus. These machines are plentiful, so there will always be one available for you to use whenever you need to obtain a melting point. Generally, it can take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes to obtain a melting point using this machine, and the sample must be observed constantly as it heats up towards the melting point. Let's first look at the various components. The apparatus consists of an aluminum block called the stage or hot stage, and this can be heated and its temperature recorded by the thermometer which is permanently in place. The sample to be melted is placed between two cover glasses in the centre of the stage and the magnifying eyepiece swings over to allow the crystals of solid sample to be viewed more easily as they are heated. An illuminating lamp directs light towards the centre of the stage and this further aids in viewing the solid as it's heated. Heat control knob can be adjusted so as to regulate the temperature and the rate of heating. And the on-off toggle switch supplies power to the heater and to the illuminating lamp. To begin a melting point determination, a single cover glass is placed in the centre of the stage, and then a few crystals of the solid material are placed on the cover glass. The smallest amount of solid material is all that is needed. Ideally, we need to be observing just a few crystals as they are heated up to the melting point. Using too much sample can easily cause an erroneous result. Another cover glass is then used to cover the crystals. The temperature regulator is set to the maximum. This allows the block and sample to heat up rapidly. The magnifier can be used to monitor the crystals of solid as they are heated. The temperature is monitored using the thermometer. When the temperature reaches about 15 to 20 degrees below the expected melting point for that substance, the rate of heating should be lowered to no more than 2 degrees per minute. This is best achieved by reading the chart on the apparatus, which shows the maximum temperature reached at each setting on the regulator knob. In this example, we expect a pure sample of the compound to melt at around 120 degrees. By reading the chart, we are going to adjust the temperature control to somewhere between 20 and 30, since this indicates that the stage should reach our melting point temperature at around that setting. The adjustment is made and the rate of heating is monitored. Use your judgement with some further minor adjustment if needed to maintain a temperature gradient of no more than 2 degrees a minute. It's very important here to maintain a slow rate of heating as we approach and go through our melting point. Doing this allows enough time for the temperatures of the stage, the thermometer and the sample to be in thermal equilibrium. If the temperature is climbing too rapidly, you will not get an accurate melting point. In such a case, can you think whether this would produce a high or a low melting point value? When the crystals begin to melt, in other words, turn from solid to liquid, the temperature is noted. Heating is continued until the very last crystal disappears, in other words, until the sample completes melting. The temperature is noted again. And in this way, we almost always report a melting range. Used cover glasses should be disposed of in the waste glass container. 
If you need to do another melting point determination straight away, the stage can be quickly cooled down by placing a small beaker with crushed ice on top. Usually, the stage need not be cooled down to room temperature, just about 20-30 degrees below the expected melting point. The procedure just described is applied in the vast majority of cases where, following a synthesis, the identity of the purified compound is pretty well known and we obtain a melting point simply to verify its identity and to qualitatively assess its purity. But in the odd instance where the identity of the solid is completely unknown, we must first establish an approximate melting point for the compound by first heating rapidly at the maximum setting of the temperature regulator, and then the stage is cooled to 20 to 30 degrees below this roughly determined melting point, and the procedure is repeated on fresh sample, this time adjusting the rate of heating with the temperature regulator to achieve a low rate about 2 degrees per minute of heating as we approach and go through the solids melting point. This concludes this video on the use of the Fisher-Johns melting point apparatus. The use of the Buki automatic melting point apparatus is described in a separate video.